Hey homos, welcome to Happy Healthy Homo, um, episode 12. Oh my gosh, you know what this means. This is the last episode of season one of Happy Healthy Homo. Yeah, um, I'm still Keegan, he's still Joel, we're yes. still boyfriends. Um, <laughs> Luckily. <laughs> and yes, this is Happy Healthy Homo, as you know, a podcast where we're empowering gay men to build happy, healthy lives. Yeah. Um, and this, this week we're going to talk about pride. Pride, so... Okay. If you're listening to this on the day it gets released, um, then tomorrow marks the start of Pride Month, June. Yeah. June is Pride Month. Is that globally or is that just in the UK? Yeah, gen generally all, all over it's marked as Pride Month, although there are Prides that happen outside of June. Yeah, because there's but, Prides in August. And yeah, things, yeah, there? but I think it's generally accepted that Pride is mm -hmm. Prime, Pride Month is June. Yeah. yeah. Well, this episode is all about Pride, so we're going to be chatting a bit about a little potted history of Pride, why it's important. We've got some questions that you guys have sent in, um, like to do with Pride, yeah. the questions relating to that. Yeah. And we're just going to have a general, just fun chit chat to finish the season. Yeah, I think we we just wanted to get ahead of it because Pride can be a bit of a bone of contention for a lot of people, can't it? Yeah. Um, people... Maybe people have gone to Pride for a long time. They feel a bit disillusioned. It's maybe mm -hmm. some people feel like it's lost its meaning. Yeah. So we just wanted to delve into that a little bit. Um, talk about our own experiences of Pride as well. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I, we, we've both been to, to Pride stuff. Yeah. Um, and uh, for me personally, it's, 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 it's marked important things in my life. So it has like a, a, nice, a, a, nice, a nice meaning. But yeah, mm. I mean... Congratulations on finishing a, a season of a podcast, Joe. I can't believe it. It has gone so, so quickly. And I think maybe because we, behind the scenes, look, guys, we do tend to film in batches. So this is only like the third, fourth time we've been yeah. in the studio. We're so doing this is a standalone episode. This is a standalone episode. We booked the studio just for this episode, guys. Um, but yeah, it's just gone so quickly, hasn't yeah. it? Yeah, it's re it's really, it's been ama amazing and overwhelming, all the feedback that we've had and the, yeah. you know, the, um, some of the lovely emails and comments. And mm -hmm. um, so we, we will be having a bit of a break after this episode, but... Yeah. We have decided, haven't we, that yeah. what we're going to do is in the break, we're going to supplement it with you guys have been sending us such amazing emails and it there's so many you really useful questions in those emails about some are about dating, some are about uh, age gaps, some are about um, jobs and work and identity and there's there's so many different topics in there that i think would be helpful for a, a lot of other people so mm -hmm. we are going to look to supplement this um our channel with it, essentially we're going to answer email an email mm -hmm. um, on uh, as a bit of a a bit of a fill-in for you so that you're not going to have uh, a massive radio silence. yeah you're not gonna have radio silence podcast from, silence yeah from from the homos however that will be over on youtube so if you're listening to this on spotify apple yeah. if you don't tend to watch youtube then this gives you a reason to head over to our youtube channel click subscribe and yeah there will be weekly videos of us they might be like 15 to 20 minute episodes yeah. at us answering very specific questions that you guys have emailed in we people have been sending paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs explaining yeah. their situations yeah yeah and we're going to delve into those emails and answer them as best as we can. Not necessarily from like, we've got all the answers and all the advice, but it's just our opinions. You yeah. guys have asked us, so we'll, we'll give our opinions on that. But yeah. you have to take our advice with a grain of salt because don't sue us. We're not, uh, <laughs> we're not, professional. we're not professionals. <laughs> yeah. And opinions are like ourselves. Everyone's got, got them. them. They usually stink. True. True that. So, so should we get into this episode? So pride. Joel, pride. So pride. So let me start off by saying, last year was my first ever Pride that I went to. It wasn't the first one of being out, but basically I came out and the pandemic happened. I like to think that I caused the pandemic. I came out and something happened to the world. COVID happened. Uh, <laughs> at least that's what maybe my religious upbringing would have had me believe. Yeah. Like I came out and then God struck the earth with some like disease. Um, however, I, that meant I couldn't celebrate the very first Pride, so um, I didn't even celebrate my second Pride. So it was the third year of being out last year that was my first ever Pride, and I went with yours truly, we did, Keegan yeah. Hurst. We went to London, didn't we? Yeah, we went to London and then Manchester. 
and it was London's 50th Pride. Yeah. Um, because the first ever Pride in London was 1972. Okay. Quick maths. Um, it was 1972, which yeah. was a few years after the, the one Stonewall riots and a year after the one in New York, Yeah, uh, which was the first ever Pride. Yeah. So should we give a pot of history? Go on then. So the Stonewall riots happened in 1969. Yeah. So basically, I don't want to prattle on about the history of Pride because... It, th there's loads of stuff written about this mm -hmm. and that's that's not what you're here for you're not here for a history lesson but as joel said 1969 stonewall riots stonewall was an inn in new york um in uh greenwich village and there were lots of people used to go there predominantly um and this is the thing that started with these riots and the movement it was um trans people it was uh, people of ethnic minorities, whether they were black, whether they were Latino, it was, you know, butch lesbians, it was effeminate gay men, it was people who couldn't hide. Yeah. Yeah, who couldn't blend in. And I think that's a really important thing to remember. And they were sick of being persecuted and eventually they'd been kicked out of the Stonewall, Stonewall in, in June. I think it was towards the end of June. I'm going to say 28th, but don't hold me to that. Um, and they started rioting. And it, it went on for a good while, mm -hmm. you know, with the police and everything. Yeah. The first Pride March was, was, a, year later. was a year later in 19... So 1970, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, and it was, as Pride is, it was a, it was a protest. Um, and, you know, a few, few thousand people marched. Mm -hmm. And then it gathered speed and it, be, it it was essentially just a march and a protest to mark the anniversary yeah, of the stonewall of the riots. stonewall riots and it started the gay liberation movement mm -hmm. um which started working towards equal you know all the rights and things that we have today uh, and the things that people have achieved over that time you know um homosexuality used to be classed as a mental health disorder mm -hmm. uh you know they they got that sorted out rights that you couldn't be sacked for your job you know mm -hmm. all these things that we take for granted now or maybe we don't take for granted that but we we should certainly be aware of um and it wasn't until 1980 in san francisco that it was the first kind of thing that we would associate what was reminiscent of pride now mm -hmm. um and then and then obviously as we got into the 80s and the aids pandemic um epidemic even and then they started being more political things involved as well because of how people were being treated mm. and it's evolved and evolved and evolved. Yeah. So flash forwarding to today, what well, lots of people seem to think of pride, maybe not necessarily gay people if they're aware of the history of it, but certainly lots of straight people I know just think it's a big party, it's a big celebration. Mm. They don't see it as a protest anymore, which you can argue that it's probably both. Like, I yeah. think there is an element of protest with it. Yeah, yeah. It is also a celebration, which I think is a good thing. But I think the danger is if you lose the protest side of things and it just becomes a big party... I don't know. I think the history of it is very important and we still have to like show up and not necessarily show up to our pride. No, yeah. no one's in like, no, no one has to do anything, but as in the people that go are there to show up to say that we are fans of equality. Yeah. We, we are trying to champion equality. Yeah. And I mean, the, the interesting thing about pride and why it's called pride is those initial marches yeah that's all they were they were marches and they were they were people from the lgbt community who were marching and they were showing that they were proud of who mm. they are and that's yeah. where it comes from and it's the opposite of shame the opposite of hiding where did you get that keegan uh, joel said it and <laughs> I, I said it yesterday completely <laughs> nicked it um <laughs> Uh, well, you're, you're right, and it's a very good it point. It is, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, because shame is something that we all deal mm. with at some point, whether it's internalised, whether it's from our upbringing, whether it's religious, whether it's yeah. you know socio-political, however it you know however it might um, materialise, mm. we we all have some element of shame, and we all do as human beings. But when it's intrinsically tied into your sexuality yeah. that's something that only we as people in you know the the lgbt community yeah um go and through. i think this is very specific to my background in you know a religious background which actually we've had loads of you guys say that you want us to talk more about which there are plans for season two there's someone i really want to get on the podcast who's 
very experienced in that area. Um, however, so I know what I'm about to say. Some of you who aren't religious will go, well, I don't care. But I've had some Christians say, well, pride inherently is bad because pride is a sin. You should never be proud. You should never have pride. Pride is one of the seven deadly sins. It's... Um, However, when we talk about pride almost being like the antidote to shame, mm. like we were talking about this yesterday, when you're trying to like correct something, there's always an overcorrection. And uh, who said that, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> we're stealing each other's acts now. <laughs> but it's true, like there is always an overcorrection. In order to get rid of shame, maybe you do have to go too far the other way and be super, super, super proud. Mm. But I'm just like, I don't really think that's a bad thing. I don't think pride is about being it's not being obnoxious. narcissistic obnoxious yeah. exactly it's about being proud of well if you're taking a christian stance it's about pre being proud of how god made you yeah. like and f i think that's a good thing and i think you know if people if you want to look at it from a religious angle um if if pride is a sin is it not a sin to make someone feel ashamed about something that they yeah. can't change about themselves yeah exactly that's a, that's a horrendous thing to do to a human being. you're right we should stop pride because it's wrong to be proud let's instead just let you all fester in shame yeah it's a, it's a hot it's, it's a horrible angle and yeah. i know that's not what all christians believe, no but. exactly and it's important to say that obviously but you things get taken out of context people are like not all christians i'm like no i know yeah. I, I'm I'm surrounded by you lots will, of Christians. You will who are always lovely. see it at marches, though. There's always a corner for the Christians with yeah. the signs. Yeah, uh, that was very emotional for me on my first Pride last us year. To rip on. And it, it, what was amazing being with you for that was there's that element where you get the people, you know, the the essentially fundamentalists yeah. who are so extreme. You've got this is the way to do it. This is the yeah. only way to do it. And they've got their placards and they're telling us that we're all going to burn in hell and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And then there was a beautiful moment where there was like a, a church group came mm. through didn't there and it was like gay christians yeah and they were in the parade mm -hmm. um and it was real it was a real juxtaposition to see one end of the spectrum yeah of the you know religious spectrum and one end and the other yeah. of acceptance and you know embracing people for who they are yeah and then obviously you had to deal with that i know you got quite yeah. emotional that, didn't yeah. you yeah it is quite emotional, but it's, um, I mean, the, the stupid, this is going on a little bit of a tangent, but the stupid thing is with that, most Christians would agree that the whole idea is to spread the message of Christianity to get more people into the church. So which one is going to do that? Mm. The, the Christians who are progressive and accepting and loving towards people of all walks of life, or the ones who are stood there going, you're going to burn in hell unless you become a Christian. Like, I don't think anyone's ever converted to Christianity from seeing you're going to burn in hell. Well, I suppose the idea <laughs> is fear, isn't it? If someone yeah. is God-fearing and they yeah. go, well, best just uh, err on the side of caution, which a lot of people fear are. Does, fear doesn't work as a as a tactic, though. Mm, well, it's worked for a so. long time. Well, has if, it? If has you, it worked? Well, if you look historically, it's kept people in check, and it's only when people start But not start in the long question. term. Well, no, not now. Only in the short term. Yeah. But yeah, but that's a religious side note. Yeah. Um, you talked about acceptance there, and you talked about people getting on board with it. A question that um, I get asked a lot, actually, and it's come up. It's come up three times, uh, just in the couple of questions that I saw then yeah. that we've had. Like we is, put a message out saying, "Give us questions yeah. on Instagram," um, and essentially all, they were all variations of the same questions of, "What about companies mm. that adopt um, the the rainbow or uh, pride up for mm. June?" cashing in uh some people have coined it rainbow capitalism yeah so there's there's a couple of ways to look at this there's a couple there's a way to look at it as a consumer mm -hmm. and there's a way to look at it as someone who works at the company if you work at the company i would suggest that if your company is doing that and as, if you if you're an ally or you are part of the community you are well within your rights to question why are we doing this mm. um you know that that has to come from inside an organization and granted you might not be you know depending where you are in the company you might not have uh, a lot but you you can do that like yeah. you, you're allowed to ask that mm. um you know when we work for organizations we want to know that they have a level of integrity mm. um and also as an outsider looking in you know you can say that there might be companies where you go well they don't have a rainbow on all the time but then that's not the logo so 
and you can have a look at how they treat their employees. You know, do they have an LGBT network? Do mm-hmm. they have um, support for LGBT employees? Are they funding LGBT causes? Because they might be, but they might not be singing about it. Yeah. Yeah, so you can look into but that. But that's a message to companies as well, that if they are, then they should be singing about it. Because I know for, for me, I would want to see, hopefully maybe some charitable work donations, some a percentage of maybe the profits during Pride Month going to LGBTQ but plus th- those companies, are, they're also in a catch-22 there because if they were to, like, you've got to be reasonable. If, if a company, a big company was to uh, do stuff for LGBT charities and then all they kept banging on about was, if you do charity and then you, you tell everybody that you've done charity... Mm. Is it really charity or are you doing it because you want the plaudits of doing it? That would get shoved in a company's face. So they're in a catch-22. Mm, I there. don't think so, though, because I think if you're actively promoting, like essentially capitalising off of a pride flag to say, come spend your money here, because we're then I would want to know, well, what are you doing to help support the gay community other than putting a rainbow? Yeah, I, I agree in that. Sorry. I there agree, needs to be transparency. I, I agree in that scenario when it's June. You know, yeah. I, I, the pro, I oh, so, they don't have to do it all year round. But if they're doing it all, well, exactly. But if they are, they don't, that's what I'm saying. They don't need to be singing about it all, no. all year round. If they, if they are doing it as part of Pride mm. Month, then maybe. So the thing, I, I get that. I, I get what people's problem is with rainbow capitalism and the because it, it's an integrity issue. Mm. Well, what you're capitalising on um, Pride Month, on our the protest, the history that we've just spoken about, everything mm. that we've gone through, and this is where we're at, and you're now capitalising on that. Yeah. I I agree. However, and this, this is not a particularly nice sentiment, but beggars can't be choosers, and it'd be nice if we didn't have to do that, but we, it, something is better than nothing. Yeah. So rather than being overly proud mm. and going, we don't want you, you doing that, I, I think... And we spoke about this on a past episode with rainbow flags outside bars or outside cafes, haven't mm-hmm. we? It's it is a symbol of yeah. acceptance, and these are my people. And and I think if you know that, and you live in the back end of nowhere, mm-hmm. and you see a you know a rainbow flag or a t shirt or a hat or a biscuit brand that's yeah. rainbowed up, and you go, do you know what? There are people out there mm. um, that understand and. Because I remember growing up feeling like I was really alone. There was, you know, there wasn't anybody gay around like me or mm-hmm. whatever. All stuff that isn't not true at all, but it's what I believed to be true at the time. And I remember the first, not just the first time I've gone to Pride, but my first Pride was at Manchester. I remember when I went to Pride at New York, just seeing all those people at that parade, mm-hmm. in the parade, at this, the people who go to watch the parade, yeah. waving flags, being completely supportive and understanding mm. knowing that that was out there that yeah. there were people that felt like that like it, it yeah. brought, brought me to tears numerous times that i spent all my life or my younger life thinking that i was on my own mm. um thinking that nobody would accept me and i would have gone to a pride parade yeah. when i was 12 and seen that there's all these people these hundreds of thousands of people that do act, and and that that rainbow is a symbol of that yeah and i think is it ideal no it's not you know could companies be better 100 mm. percent. but is it important for that visible for someone yeah. to see it somewhere to know that there are people that i like them and support them and mm-hmm. want to see them thrive and don't want to see them suffer and live with all that shit yeah well, I'd rather it happened than didn't. I remember when I first came out and during the pandemic, living, not fully living with my ex, but he basically kind of moved into my space, <laughs> which I didn't like, get out. However, um, he wasn't very nice. But uh, I remember queuing, well, you know when you had to queue for supermarkets and queuing for Sainsbury's and all of Sainsbury's logos had changed to the pride flag. And I just remember being stood in the queue as someone who was like feeling slightly uncomfortable with my sexuality or or always on alert feeling like if people see me and with my boyfriend or if we're holding hands like are we going to be safe here to be stood there I remember just looking at the rainbow flag in Sainsbury's I was like I feel really calm here and I don't I'm not worried Mm. about what someone might say because I also know that if something I know I'm very dramatic but if something happened in the store 
where if I was holding my boyfriend's hand, someone said something homophobic. I know, or I would hope, that the company, that Sainsbury's, would back us up and yeah. they would kick that person out because, you know... They're, they're flying the flag. They're flying the flag. Yeah. So I do think it's a good thing. The bad thing is I think when companies depending on their location, support or don't support it. So I saw this last year. Um, the only company that sticks in my mind that did this was PlayStation. So shame on you, PlayStation. Sorry if you ever um, sponsor our, our content. Um, but I remember seeing that PlayStation in all the Western cultures in America changed the pride flag. In the UK, changed the pride flag. Same in Australia. But the ones in Qatar, the one in Saudi Arabia, the one in the countries where being gay is illegal, they what, didn't change where's it. Where's PlayStation best? I don't know. I don't know where they're based. But basically, all their social media accounts changed. But, uh, Hang on. Unless it was in those locations. And I just think that that is awful. Either you're on the side... I get why they did it. Because it's not profitable. It's illegal in those countries. It's not profitable for them to because they don't want to lose customers. But then I'm like, well, then that is rainbow capitalism. Because you're happy to parade out this flag in the countries where being gay is, is more celebrated but you're not happy to stand up for us in the countries so where it's So PlayStation banned. changed it in America, say, yeah. or England, uh, UK, whatever, mm -hmm. but they didn't change they it. They didn't in... change it for the Russian uh, okay. PlayStation social media accounts or the Saudi Arabian PlayStation social media yeah, accounts. Yeah, that, and I think that is a complete double standard. Yeah, that is an, that is an absolute double standard because if, you are, um, if, you, if you're promoting a cause then sometimes there's going to be backlash for a cause. Yeah. And that's the whole idea. That's mm. And that, in and of itself, is what pride... That, if someone wanted to make a stand, is when you do do it in yeah. Qatar or Russia or, you know, um, wherever... Uh, Barbados. I'm just thinking of places it's illegal. <laughs> I don't think PlayStation has a Barbados account. But, <laughs> you never know. Um, <laughs> but, and, and, and people say, is pride still relevant? Is Should we still have pride? Yes, absolutely. Because there are, and, and people, and this ties in with why is there not a straight pride? Is pride still relevant? Yes. There are still countries where it's illegal to be gay. Us having pride, uh, pride events, showing that we can be who we are and have the freedoms that we do. And it, it's not perfect. I know there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on in America. Mm. There's a lot going on even in the UK where they're, they've not banned cons uh, conversion therapy and, mm. you know, things like that. that there's, there's a lot going on, but we still have a lot more rights than a lot of other people and it's it's sh it's hope it's giving mm. those people hope i've never i'm yet to see a story written about a 12 year old boy who kills himself for being bullied because he's straight mm. yes 12 year old boys who were bullied kill themselves but no one's bullied because they're straight no it might be something it, it's never to do with and this is the thing people have issues with when i've said this before on social media they're like well i know a straight boy who's bullied at school and i'm like yes not for being straight and no, that is the the key thing that is the key thing for being straight not it, it's not saying straight people don't get bullied yeah, yeah. or bad things don't happen yeah but. it's like a, a gay kid could get bullied but not for being gay that's fair that's yeah. a fair thing yeah and and but it, very rarely does that happen yeah. you know it's like a black kid could get bullied mm. and then they could get bullied for being black yeah that they're, they're they're two different ones mm. you know racially motivated and one's not again it's very difficult to separate them mm. um you know there's not people being beaten to death you know think back to like matthew shepherd who was beaten to death and called a faggot repeatedly mm. and i don't say that word lightly and strung up afterwards it's mm. horrific you know hor that that stuff still goes on yeah. people you know hate crimes are uh through the roof they've in increased uh, exponentially especially on in this government mm. uh that we've got in the uk and i know it's the case the same around the, so is pride necessary yes absolutely it is because until people can walk around holding their partner's hand without fear yeah um then yeah it is absolutely necessary we mm. do still need to protest against you know the don't say gay bill in america we do need to protest against how russia treats it that you know there's a, a hiv um, epidemic going on in russia that no one's talking about or treating mm. because you know they don't accept that there's gay people there and you know there's, there's so much going on in the world mm. and we might not be able to have an active impact in that other than you know if we were to give to charities or go there or get which a lot of us can't do but what we can do is is give them hope is set an example is is be a you know we as a country 
whether it's the UK, whether it's another country, to cities can show, you know, that people can get together. Because again, Pride, one of the questions that was asked there was, it's, I'm going to my first Pride this year, what can mm -hmm. I expect? Um, lots of straight people. Yeah. Lots of straight people. Yeah. You know, there's, it, uh, and it's one of my favorite things to see in the parade is the families that line the parade yeah they're waving their flags the kids are cheering they're mm -hmm. getting involved uh, they don't have to be there no but they're there to to show their support and it, it that's what pride can do, do it can show that you know people don't have to be at loggerheads people can all get yeah. on people can support each mm -hmm. other it doesn't impact anybody else no so well there was even i remember what we watched it from the top of this hotel in london and i remember seeing gay a uh, because there's, if you haven't been before, there's almost like categories of different groups of people in the march, and I think <laughs> anyone not, can join any of these groups. They're not categories. No, but I know it's not like category <laughs> is gay families. But one of the one of the people that started the reason I say that is because, for example, a gay rugby team in London suddenly they're marching. They're all in their rugby rugby kits. Behind them suddenly you have gay paramedics and it's yeah. it's a London paramedic team. Then behind them you had the gay families. They had a banner saying gay yeah. families and there was men, women, husbands, wives, whether they're gay, straight, children, people pushing prams yeah. and they were obviously allies of the gay community yeah. and I loved that, that it yeah. wasn't just it's not just gay people no, are right. No. It's people It's everybody. at all walks of life. And that's what I mean by categories. You just get loads of different groups of people yeah different sections marching businesses yeah uh, charities yeah groups um and it is it is it's amazing to see it's amazing to see people take time out of the day to like, like for me i love manchester pride right mm -hmm. manchester pride was my i actually preferred manchester pride to london pride yeah manchester pride was amazing uh it was the first one i ever went to not long after i'd come out and be and and something that my friend told me, and and I want to say it to you now. I'm going to nick it from him. Um, is that the two most important parts of Pride are the beginning and the end, the parade, which is the protest, um, and the end, which is the vigil. Mm -hmm. uh, the, that's certainly what they do at Manchester, where they talk about you know all the people that have we've lost, all the people that have fought for things, all the things, all the you know all the people that are not there anymore mm -hmm. and it's it is heartbreaking but they're they're the important but the party in the middle is great mm. you know and we should celebrate how far we've come and and what's you know what we're doing in the world and where we're at but the parade the protest because mm -hmm. there's still stuff to be done and the vigil at the end of the are the most important parts yeah, definitely well one of the questions and this is a very controversial topic is do we think pride has been over sexualized because we talk about it being a family event family friendly however there are certain let's say categories just because it's funny or certain groups of people at pride where it has gotten very over sexualized or almost into the sort of kink realm that lots of people are feeling like are you welcome at pride because i feel like if we're talking about it being a family friendly event then yeah it's definitely not appropriate but then also do those people they also deserve to be proud of themselves. Do you yeah. know what I mean? They absolutely well, deserve that. Well, so. yeah, I mean, the name, the thing that you go, well, everybody can be proud of who yeah. they are, but not but you. But not you. Like, <laughs> so there is, are we talking about like the people who dress up as dogs and things? Yeah, people with like dog masks, people who maybe they're wearing like trousers without a bottom in them. So assless they're wearing chaps. Assless chaps. Okay, right. So I've got two children and I took my kids to their first Pride. Mm -hmm. I think it was last year I took them to Leeds Pride. And I think we might have seen someone dressed up as a dog. And I think we probably definitely saw some assless chaps. Mm. Um, maybe one pair. I mean, because this is the thing people make out like everybody's half naked. Yeah, and it's just not, not the case. No. It's, it, they're the exception rather than the rule. So the, I mean, the dog thing... Uh, it, 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 people people might uh, like I didn't know what it was I didn't know why people were dressed no. up as a dog so it's not like they've got they're walking around with a wang hanging no, out or anything it's just it's a, a costume odd. but people see yeah. but, but is it not odd to see someone dressed up as Mickey Mouse exactly well that's what I mean I don't think the people in the pup mask and dog I don't think there's anything inappropriate about that like I said it's odd not in a judgmental way just in the fact that you don't see many people like that yeah. I don't think that's an issue. I think when people are pretty much nude, 
I think, and they're, they're literally just wearing tiny little pants. Maybe it's a thong or assless chaps, topless with like bondage gear on. I do think that's inappropriate. I think there's a place for it at Pride, but it's probably not at the parade. It is inappropriate. I don't, I've never seen these people on the parade. I, we saw them when we were walking to the parade in the tube stations. Well, in yeah, the, but they're not in the parade. No. Um, yeah, so they're But not, there are kids everywhere. They're not in the parade. But then, I mean, you've lived in London for 11... You can walk down the streets of London, you see all sorts. <laughs> uh, I don't see nude people well, walking Well, but you go to a, a sporting event, someone's got their, their top off, yeah. someone's running around in their boxes. Yeah. Like, there's, there's... You can look... There's that kind of stuff everywhere. And if you want to pick... Should it be there? No, it shouldn't. But is everybody doing it? No, they're not. It's no. not like there's organised sex parties at the side of the Pride Parade. No. That, because there isn't. And there but are Lots of people think that that section of people is giving the gay community a bad name. Because that's what... If that is what the media are picking up on and saying that it's a lot bigger deal than it is, because you're right, from my experience of Pride, it's only a tiny, tiny... Like, a few odd people here and there but it's blown out of proportion. That's then what lots of maybe straight people who have never been to Pride think Pride is. Yeah, they yeah. think it's a seedy, horrible, like, just gay event. They think of it in a negative way. Well, there's there's a couple of things to look at. A, you look, I mean, case in point, the, the media wants to put the gay community in a bad light, so mm -hmm. they, they, of course they pick up on that. Um and yeah, you know what? We're all being, we, we are all represented. It's really difficult. Nobody wants to be represented, don't they? Uh, you know, and, and we are all different. And But we do all get lumped in, yeah. I mean, especially at Pride. Mm. So we, you know, there is an element of, you know, people are looking at you and pe you are carrying the flag. So when, it's like that thing of where people go, uh, they are, you know, if they were wearing minimal clothes and then they go, oh, people just think that, uh, you know, all I care about is sex and th and over sex. Well, yeah, because that, that's the vibe that you're giving off. Mm. Like, if you don't want people to make those assumptions, don't act in a certain way. Mm. It's really, com it's like you can't walk around, you know, it's like people who've got their Instagram that's full of um, them in their boxes or jock straps or whatever and they go uh, you know all you care about is sex and they go don't make assumptions about yeah. ab about me based on my Instagram well that's that is exactly what you're advertising yeah you're advertising that yeah. um, and so I suppose with pride yeah you know it, 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 it is going to have those yeah. kind of repercussions but they are but for people who've not been to pride mm. or for people who've maybe fought they are by far and away yeah. a very very small minority yeah it's, definitely and and i think because uh, certainly if families are there people would say do, do you mind yeah um you know I, there probably is places where that's going where there is well stuff you never know maybe maybe the police do say not here like go yeah. go into the heart of soho tonight and do like dress however you want but mm. not at the break maybe not they do the, do that yeah Who I, knows? Think, I think i think by and large if you're worried, if you want to go to Pride, the bit that you need, want to go to is the parade. Yeah. Like, that's the important part. Yeah. And that kind of stuff is not happening no. in the parade. No. And in and around the parade. But it might be happening at a private party. It might be happening, I don't know. So but, let's say there are some odd things going on, like people dressed up as dogs, or they're in crazy outfits or costumes. Even if kids are there to see that, firstly, there's nothing inappropriate. It's just a little bit like we're not used to it. Yeah. Kids are so, like, kids don't, people don't give kids enough credit. They think that they're like, oh, I need to shield you again. Yeah, yeah. But when you took your kids and they saw someone dressed up as, like, a dog, they probably had a little giggle and, like, oh, that's a bit, like, mm. new. But they're not they're not scarred for life because they've seen someone well, no, dressed in went, leather they, and dog outfit. And, and they were, I remember them chatting to one of the drag queens and, mm. you know, they, they were, they were um, asking about, the stuff that was going past in the p different groups that were going past in the parade mm. and um i remember talking to taylor about there was one group that was uh talking about uh, they were marching about the the conservative government and the, and i said mm. and, I, and I, it was case in point pride is political yeah. pride is a protest you know and the kids the kids want my i mean my kids are, uh are, well they would have been like 14 and 10 then mm. um so they they're aware and they want to understand and they want to know what's going on and yeah. you know there were so many kids in in the parade so I I I think the parade is you know um, is a safe place yeah and if you want to go to a pride 
that you don't have to. I know like a lot of people mm. um, have been in touch and said, I don't go to Pride for whatever reason and feel bad about it or, mm. or people tell me that I should feel bad. You don't have to go to Pride. No, you, you can, absolutely don't. You can, you can, you know, I, never underestimate living like living your own life being you know yeah. a, an out gay man in and of itself is showing pride or you well, could do yeah or you could do something sort of like yeah. little, well i think um, if you're not going to pride because you feel ashamed and you deep down really want to go i think that's sad and that like however you can push through that and get through that shame and go to pride try and do that mm. but if you are sat there and you're like i don't want to go to pride and i don't care that i've never been or i don't I'd like you genuinely don't want to go and that's absolutely fine absolutely you don't fine. need to feel any sort of guilt yeah. for not wanting to take there's part no, there's no right or wrong way to be no. a gay there's no right or wrong way to be political there's no right or wrong way to be mm. a role model there's no right or like there's not this is just us talking about mm. pride our experiences you know like i went to i remember going to new york and mm -hmm. and seeing all those people and you know, it was it was nice to be. I was stood near uh, Julius's and and near the yeah. Stonewall Lane, and you know, seeing all that, it, it's it's really emotional to to think how I, how isolating it can feel, mm. and then growing up with with yeah. that. You know, I've loved pr prides at Manchester. I've always felt mm -hmm. really well. I remember the first pride that I went to at Manchester. I remember going with my friends, and they took me into a, a bar, an amazing bar called New York, New York. If you're ever in. Uh, in Manchester, and the music that was on, it was like someone had plugged my Spotify. Yeah. In. <laughs> I was like, "It's all my tunes." Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is weird, I, <laughs> but I felt I felt at home, and I thought these these are my yeah, people, definitely. Um, and it's there's something very heartwarming and, mm. and liberating about that. And I'd also say if you don't want to go to a massive pride like a London, Manchester, or New York, or wherever you're from, there are there tend to be lots of different prides in little towns and things. We went to one in Milton Keynes because Keegan was doing a talk at Milton Keynes Pride. Milton Keynes is a very small city in the UK. They'd booked out this area. They got a Their few big was, tops. It was really good. It was they very had stands. Fam very family. Yeah, very family friendly. They had stands, food, street food, rides, fairground rides. It was just, it was a real, it was a much smaller event, all contained to this one little area on this field. But it was a family friendly event and it was so much fun. So if you feel a bit uh, sort of daunted by going to a, one of the biggest pride celebrations, just look in your local area. The chances mm. are smaller towns where you're from yeah. will have a pride and yeah, it yeah. might feel a lot more, I don't know, a lot less intimidating, basically. Mm. How could you celebrate pride without going to a pride event? Well, I think like you said, one of the subtle, maybe superficial ways is to wear some clothing that you feel is subtly yeah. pridey, like my shoes here, if you're watching on YouTube. Uh, if you're not, I'll describe them. They're black velvet Adidas trainers with embroidered like doodles on them in multicolors. And Keegan bought these for me to, I think it was just for my first pride, wasn't it? Yeah. It wasn't even a birthday or anything. Yeah. Um, and happy, I absolutely love them. A gay Christmas. Um, and I absolutely love them. And I, I don't really have, I don't have any clothes that are like slathered in rainbows and glitter and things. It's not really my style. Mm. Um, however, I do like things with a subtle hint, like your Adidas top. Keegan's got, if you're listening, instead of the three white stripes down the sleeves, they're sort of tie dye ish bright colours. Mm. It's basically the pride. And my train. Pride. I mean, th these are all. These are all. So I like. I personally like Adidas. Yeah. Um, this is not an, an ad or anything. <laughs> I bought these because. Uh, Adidas came out a, a good few years ago. <laughs> Not came out like that. They came out. Adidas is gay, guys. <laughs> Adi gay. Uh, they came out and said that if any of their sponsored athletes were to come out, mm. then they would support them and they wouldn't pull the funding, which I mean, legally they're obliged to do. But they mm. actually came out and said it and they didn't have yeah. to. Um, so I like it. I like Adidas. So I got these trainers a few years ago. They've got like a paint and splash on on these. And yeah. so you could do it like that mm -hmm. if you. But as I said before, you you don't have to. You don't have to do anything. You can celebrate yeah. pride by, I don't know, you just just by being by being you is yeah. an act of, you know, pride. So yeah. you, maybe watch a, a documentary or watch something about the history of the gay community. Yeah. Like I know I really want to do that because I know a decent amount about the gay history, but I don't know 
like there's people that know way more mm. and like i i want to wise up on on all these different things you could go back and watch some um gay movies or gay tv yeah. you know you could there's angels in america there's milk there's queer as mm. folk there's the english version there's the american version yeah there's there's films that you could watch like um god's country or um mm. i said milk didn't i mm. um Call me by your name. There's all yeah. this stuff that you can watch. That well, yeah, you could make a list. This is quite fun for the month of June. You could make a list of. I don't know how many days are in June. Thirty. Let's say thirty. You could make a list of. What 30, are you doing? 30, 30 what? Uh, January, February, March, April, May, June. Thirty. Yeah. Thirty. Okay. So you could make a list of thirty things. You could get really organised. Uh, thirty pieces of media or content to consume, whether they're musicals or films gay films and things that are like very important to the gay community or whether they're articles and things yeah. so you could every day try and tick off one yeah. of these things that's, that's quite fun last question then okay. this is a good question what's your favorite part about pride my favorite part about pride i think it is the parade and slash the community i think even if so i we didn't see the parade at manchester because uh, we didn't arrive in time. We did it in London. Yeah. Um, and I think even though we'd missed the parade, walking through Manchester and just the camaraderie between everyone, that we were all there for the same reason, the same purpose. And also we felt like incredibly, well, I felt incredibly safe there where I was like, I can literally be just myself. I can almost just exhale and go, oh, I don't have to mm. carry with me this sense that I do. I think most of my life, which is like, Am I okay here? Am I safe here? If people knew about my sexuality, is that okay? Like, I I can drop that for the next few hours because mm. I'm around my people. Yeah. I think that's my faith. What about yeah, you? Yeah, as as much as I'm loath to agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, w I think that's always been the thing for me that first time I went, I was like, these are my people. And mm. I, like you said, I feel there's like... A, there's no pretense or, yeah. uh, and, and I don't feel like I have that now, but I certainly did then. Mm. And just s knowing that other people who maybe do have that in their lives can come and completely mm. be themselves and, and get on and, um, the, the different show, like, you, you know, you can, Manchester's more like a festival, but you know, if you go to Manchester, or there's there's parties, there's there's things going on where mm. people you can meet people that you might not have normally met, and it's that yeah, like you said, that community aspect of it, um, and also just seeing all the the kids and the yeah. families and stuff there, you know, knowing that these kids who might be straight who are being brought by parents who are probably straight um, are mm. there they are going to be part of a society mm -hmm. where which is what we're seeing now with gen z kids and mm -hmm. that are a they're lot open they're a lot more open about their sexuality and who they are and that is only ever yeah. a good thing you know the impact and they're not just tolerant of people different to them they're accepting and affirming of people affirming, different to them yeah and they want to be they want to be there and spend that time with them that's important yeah to them and and you know there's uh, obviously there's pride that covers every everybody mm. and then there's uh they, they do black pride and they do yeah. trans pride mm -hmm. and the, you know they're they're i mean the marches for those yeah. the protest for those is more you know point pointed yeah. and more in, you know it's, it's uh, neat m m probably more needed than the, the bigger one at yeah. the minute with everything that's going on that's true and i'd say actually on that the only people that aren't welcome at Pride are the LGB Alliance. <laughs> yeah. The people who exclude trans people yeah. from Pride. They're yeah. the people that should not be the, at Pride. The important thing to remember about Pride is it was predominantly started by trans people. Yeah, there wouldn't be a Pride without trans people. But the trans people started 50 years ago. They started that and 50 years ago they were being shoved to the back of the parade mm. out of the way and 50 years on it's still the same. Yeah, And it's not cool no it's it's not okay no. and luckily i've seen videos of previous prize where people if they're wearing lgb alliance stuff they basically get pushed out of pride and like shouted out yeah, of the no, the t is so. part of the, it's part of it yeah you wouldn't have the pride parades without we, the t we, yeah so. they they started everything and they're an integral they're a part of the community so yeah, yeah. well happy pride everyone 
yeah Ho- hopefully hopefully that's made you a bit more positive positive. and like i said pride the whole thing of pride is not perfect no we're operating in a broken system yeah and we're trying to make the best of it and mm-hmm. we can all impact that yeah we can all impact that whether you're a big fish or a small fish mm-hmm. we all have a level of impact so the yeah. progress starts with you and it, it works out so just do what you can do yeah nicely said thanks well thank you guys for watching if you enjoyed and you're not currently following us then please follow us on any audio platform on instagram tiktok and on youtube um and we will see you soon i don't know when we'll see you guys next and if you want to get in touch as well with email hello at happyhealthyhomo.com and as i said we'll be supplementing the break with uh some 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 vloggy replies to your to your emails yeah so Um, head over to youtube if you're not on there yeah. and follow us on there but thank you for joining us on our little podcast journey yeah. i can't believe how well it's gone yeah. and we couldn't have done it without your support so thank you for being a fellow homo yeah um thank you to my co-homo co-homo como como lake mm. lake, lake como. como yeah and thank you to you thanks aren't bro. you wonderful thank you i am yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes i am <laughs> oh and that was going to be our takeaway you know we give you guys a takeaway it's something like a recommendation it was these sorts of trainers these clothing it's like get ahead of the rush you don't yeah. want to be last minute preparing your outfit for pride Yeah, because all the good stuff goes exactly so um start your hunting now yeah um go for it and cool. have an amazing pride stay mm-hmm. safe look after yourselves look after each other yeah um And we'll see you in season two. Thank you. See you in season two. Bye.